<laughs> Blue Beetle is coming out. Blue Beetle is a DC character that nobody's ever heard of unless you watch Justice League Unlimited or various other Justice League animated series. Uh, I'm excited to see this movie. Psych, no, I'm not, because what's going on <laughs> is the director of this film has gone out of his way to do everything in his power to make you, the viewer, not want to see it. <laughs> Let's read the headlines. Yes. How about that? Angel Manuel Soto doubles down on promoting <coughs> Blue Beetle with identity politics, questions if it was possible to have a Latino superhero on a Times Square billboard. Oh my God. Blue Beetle director said the film had to get theatrical debut because the film features a Latino superhero, Latino family, and highlights Latino culture differently. <laughs> Blue Beetle director claims SAG-AFTRA and WGA strikes affect disproportionately to minorities. Yeah. And it, it only gets worse when you dive deeper. Apparently there's a scene in Blue Beetle, this is confirmed by the director, that is an allegory for illegal immigration and ICE raids. Can't wait! That's why I go to the movies. That's amazing. That's why I <laughs> go to the This says, uh, before the movie begins, the family is immigrated to America from Mexico. But Jamie Reyes' father, Alberto, doesn't have documentation, so he's under constant threat of deportation. Though the film doesn't depict an ice raid, it does include a scene that echoes one. Cord Industries invades the family's home in a scene that can play as just another dramatic moment in a superhero movie, or be taken as symbolic of events that tear apart real families. The director said, there is a history that exists before an ice raid. A history that includes traveling miles, danger, working hard, becoming a family, <laughs> creating <laughs> memories, and thinking that everything is going to be okay. But all of a sudden, everything you fought for, everything that you've worked for, everything that you've built is now burning. I needed the depiction to be triggering mm. because it's the experience of many. Who is this clown? This is the, <laughs> the director, director of the film. Yeah, who, by the way, in 2016 <clears throat> made, a, made a, a video called Trump's America. So that tells you everything <laughs> you need to know. Like, I mean, uh, we need a government that has an fire. open southern border. Until that happens, we need movies like exactly. this. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly right. Uh, what, what they should have done is they should have had Taylor share didn't make this movie because he made Sicario. Uh -huh. That's the Blue Beetle movie I want to see, right. ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the other thing he has to fight drug smugglers. That would be, see, I'm I'm down for that. So <laughs> only if the drug smugglers win. Yes. Well, yeah, of course. Uh, but here's the thing: this movie has an 87 percent from the critics on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, that is better than The Flash's 64 percent and Shazam's 46 percent from the from the critics. Can I throw a flag on the play? Because they didn't let me see the movie. Ah, I'm so based they, in Denver. Not just me, but if they didn't let me, they didn't let a lot of other people see it. Yeah. So maybe they're pre-screening it to maybe softer audiences. I, I don't know. Just let's yeah. give it a few days before we get the true score. I'm just... From from the critics? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I would have figured that they would be in right now, given that we're about headed to launch, right? Uh -huh. and the, the, the embargo would have gone right up until release. Yeah, but if you don't see it, you don't see it. So yeah. it, it, it opens tonight. Okay. So, so uh, I'll, I'll say this. One thing that I found very interesting is in recent DC releases, the critics have been more all over the place than mm -hmm. the audience has. So on The Flash, the audience went 83%. Mm -hmm. On Shazam, the audience went 86%. It feels like the, the critics are actually being a little bit more unbiased towards the DC movies. I feel, I feel like they're probably more in the pocket of Marvel most of the time because so many of those companies are owned by Disney subsidiaries, right? I don't, you know, I but hear Time that Warner a lot. owns a lot of, yeah, but Time Warner owns a lot of brands. If one of these studios wants to write me a huge check, just Let's bring go. it. I'm in. Let's, I'm in. Let's go. Five stars. Um, it's it's projecting twenty five to thirty million dollar opening Ooh. on a on a budget of one hundred and twenty five million. Let's for for comparison, Barbie opened to about one hundred and sixty million on a budget of one hundred million. Granted, they probably did about double the marketing for that, but this movie probably has less in the way of marketing mm. because they're not sending the actors out to do anything because they can't right now. But the directors because of the writer get strike full. It's open season for directors because they to, re to ruin their own that's movies right, yeah. right now. Wouldn't so that's exactly what he's been doing. I'm picturing like the head, like uh, he, like the head of Warner Brothers, is just like, oh, could you please? <laughs> Could you please stop talking? But they, but they won't stop talking, I, which makes me want to ask a question because I, I asked a question on Twitter the other day, or, or should I say I made a statement. I said, look, it's time for these studios to start shrinking the budgets of these movies. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and a lot of the pushback, and rightfully so, people to the contrary said, look, what they need to do is invest in better writers. I said, yes, that's true. But here's the thing. 
you have less to lose if you invest less in each of these projects, right? Your, your bare minimum to make back your money is smaller. So if they fail and they bomb, mm -hmm. it's less of a, it hurts your bank account less to see that flop than to see it flop when you spend $200 million on a movie and nobody goes to see it. And also they're not cutting costs by hiring a, le a less talented direct a writer. That's yeah. not where the money's losing. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. I mean, they should hire at least one independent film director for all these movies and say, Mary or whatever your name is, what would you do differently? How would you shave costs here? And then he or she will say, I would do this, I would do this, I would do this. Yeah. And you cut the costs. You don't need to spend a gazillion dollars in these movies. You just don't. Yeah. Uh, it's harder with some of these superheroes because they're so CGI heavy. I get that. I get That's, that. You can still. Yeah. And also make them shorter, make it 90 minutes. That's, and that's like the, the other <sighs> thing I said the other day is like, it was like every time what I picture is I picture some writer, he's got this script. He walks into the, to the studio. He's like, here's this perfect hour and 30 minute movie. And the studio's like, great. Now let's just add another hour on top of that and make ah, it so that nobody wants right. to go see it. Like get me in and out of a movie under two hours. Yeah. I will already, pro Mary, Mary might be objective. I'm just going to give you a good review because you didn't monopolize <laughs> my time. I'm like, bro, like you How got How long me is Blue Beetle? I, I don't know the runtime on it. Let me look like, uh, so, uh, You can't, there is no way this movie is like a two and a half hour movie. I, I, they, I bet you at least a two. I'm gonna it's at least two hours. It's not It's not under two hours. It's an yeah. origin story. There's a 20, uh, Dollar it's super chat. Two uh, hours, seven minutes. Okay, good. That's that's fine. Like I'm two under like under two hours and fifteen minutes. I'm good. Okay, this yeah. one from Francisco Sanchez Jr. says, "Hi y'all. Phil, apologies in advance, but could you sing or yell a random All That Remains <laughs> lyric? Cheers. <laughs> Any lyric. Anything. Just re really? <laughs> Why? He paid for Why? it. That's so weird and it it, 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 feel, it feels uncomfortable yeah it's like yeah, it's okay. weird yeah maybe you could so. wait until you're comfortable later in the show think of one you'd like to say yeah all right there you uh, go. it's kind of like um when they put act, you on the spot like uh, they act they ask a lot of actors they're like what's your favorite movie and they're like oh. like uh, there's plenty of actors who don't even watch their own work like mm. who, yeah. who find it uncomfortable to watch their own work woody allen mm -hmm. never i think yeah. woody allen watched his first movie he directed then it's come out I yeah don't, don't can't do it, do it. Can't do it. It's like, it's like people uh, will talk about stuff we've said on the show. I'm like, bro, I don't remember what I said. Like, I, I don't remember, and I don't watch any of this back. I can't. I can't. Uh -huh. um, look, you t what? My logic for this was like, I, there was a way he could have done this, and what he could have done is make the original marketing all inclusive. You want to speak to everybody. If you want to reflect back on the movie mm -hmm. after it comes out and start bringing up these topics mm -hmm. that you find to be related to identity mm -hmm. and the oppression Olympics, all that stuff, there's a discussion that could be had there that sure. he could have had, he could have done the same thing. He could have done more interviews. It's not like these studios or any of these rags that make these outlets aren't going to like yeah. take an interview with the guy. Yeah. Like you can go and talk about it. Like, well, reflecting on the movie, it really was about ice and uh, <laughs> immigrations and customs enforcement. He could do that, sure. but do it after you've released the movie. The whole the thing movie. right now is it's the first Latino superhero to or get you, his own movie. Or you can say that and say, but you know what? This is for everybody. You know, exactly. I know it's a Latino family, but I think every kid's going to say, I want to be Blue Beetle. And just spin it that way. That's yeah. so easy and it's so inclusive yeah. and it's so positive. Or just say, you know what? I shot this scene and it was amazing. <laughs> this went wrong, but the actors rallied for me. It was an amazing moment. I can't wait for you to see it. Yeah. This is that's what a, Susan that's a Sarandon thing. said. She said, what's fabulous about Blue Beetle? Susan Sarandon is <laughs> she's the in, bad guy. She's, she's, she's the bad guy. She is the Blue Beetle. It's the first Latinx <laughs> hero that has his own movie. She said Latinx. Even better, all of them are Mexican because his family is Mexican, all the actors are Mexican, uh -huh. and it's Spanish, so it's subtitled. You know, there's... I'm like, that sounds great. <laughs> there's something going on with a lot of people that, that are like from like south of the u.s border they act like they're not white but guess what they're all descendants of europeans you're all crackers you're all crackers <laughs> is that oh is that a bad thing to say true. i don't know i i think you're are you, you're allowed to say is that on our our list of words of, uh, that we can't say no 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 no, no, no list uh, no, uh, look, this, it's it's absolutely ridiculous. And as far as I'm concerned, we're we're in the death throes of DC before James Gunn takes over. Right now, he's gonna have a corpse in his hands. Yeah, yeah. he's like, in, like there's really funny. There was another. Is he rebooting everything? Yeah, there, yeah. he's he's starting everything. So there's a really funny interview recently where somebody said like, oh, I think bringing on James Gunn and Peter Safran is really gonna reboot people's interest in DC. I'm like, no, mm. you're wrong. No. Like they that was like make you, what it is is they're gonna have to settle for like three good movies. Like they're gonna have to hit three home runs that only make a little bit of money yeah. and make a little bit more each time. Does yeah. someone actually say that? It, Do they think that normal people yeah. pay attention to industry news? <laughs> no. 
Are they, no, yes, they do. Uh, they're they're in their own I'm, echo I don't even think the average person like walking down the street knows who James Gunn is. Yeah, that's true. Probably not. They don't care. No. I just want to <laughs> see. They don't know that yeah. anything's getting <laughs> rebooted. It's just confusing. I yep. want to see how Bruce Wayne becomes Batman because we've never seen that story. Ah, yes. I just, I, I just I, need I, that I, scene. I, you know, I, I just watched Batman 89 over the week. I hadn't seen uh-huh. it in years and it's it's so good. It Batman so, 89, it's, huh? It's so good. I yeah. hadn't watched it in years. That's the, the Michael Keaton one? The original, yeah. Okay. And now they like, didn't show the Joker right away. They yeah. made you wait yeah. and wait and wait. My, well, my, like, not just that, but the, the not just when he becomes Joker, but when he first appears in the office and he's shadowed out of yeah. the shot. Yes. And, mm-hmm. and it, there's like four minutes of tension mm-hmm. of building up to his face reveal. Yeah. That's just, it's such expert filmmaking that's just so lost yeah. on the industry now. Like uh-huh. you watch it and you're like, like I need to see it. I yeah. need to see it. And and it's just lost on people these days. They're they're blinded. Like it's so funny because there is CGI in that movie. It's really bad because it <laughs> came out in 1989. It's like the space laser. It's it's really bad. Like the the X like the the Batwing is really bad looking. Mm-hmm. But it's great. It's yeah. it's fun and it's and it's amazing. And nothing that gets made these days is ever going to have that type of feel again. Well, like the last couple of Halloween movies, Michael Myers. Is front. I mean, he might as well be like a star of a variety show. Yeah. There's no, there's no hiding him. There's no mystery. It's like there he is. He's got a knife, and it's like, come on. Original Halloween, you barely see the guy. He's like, he's in the shadows. It's like he's, if they made Jaws now, it'll be CGI. Yeah, yeah. Looking at the damn shark the whole time. Well, you know the story I there. Mean, the yeah. Bruce the shark we kept malfunctioning, and they had to show it less and less, yeah. and it made a classic movie it's amazing yeah, it's so. amazing oh but that may, reminds me maybe i will go see the meg this weekend maybe I'm, <laughs> you said it's 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 so bad until it's great yes until it's great until so it's great the so you're meg, suffering until you're just asleep. like bang okay that's great it just goes Hilarious. crazy it just it's like the remember piranha from a couple of years ago which is yeah. outrageous piranha 3d <laughs> no pretense just absurdity but but fun and Mm, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the Flash made 268 million on a budget of like 300 million. Uh, Shazam, That's worldwide, though, right? Sh- yes. Okay. Shazam made 134 million on a budget of 125 million, which means with marketing, both of them lost money. Yeah. yeah. And just That's remember, you Rachel Zegler. Just remember, <laughs> it's all Rachel Zegler's fault. And just remember that this is all happening while these actors are telling the studios, I want more money. Yeah. I want more money in residuals from my oh, mo- from my movie God. that lost money. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's absolutely so bonkers. Ridiculous. And uh, they're they're kind of banking on the star power of the lead actor from uh, from Cobra Kai. I don't know if that's enough to really sell people on this movie beyond like I love Cobra Kai, but I don't know if that's enough to sell people on this yeah. film. And it really does kind of symbolize how big DC has flopped. Post post Nolan, right? Yeah. Um, as much as I love, okay, love is a strong word. As much as I like Batman vs Superman, the the extended edition, not the theater edition. Hmm. Uh, I was actually talking about. So think about this. We were just talking about how movies are all too long now, and then Zack Snyder's over here, like, why couldn't I have gotten in on this when when that became yeah. a thing? Because he loves to make his movies four and a half. Mm-hmm to five hours long he's like i love shots where the whole scene is just nine minutes of a guy walking up to a box uh and they won't let him do that but uh it's all of this is kind of like proving that they need to just reboot everything they need to just drop it because that that gal gadot wonder woman 3 that was reported yeah. not happening not happening not happening oh so now okay. i didn't they, know that they need to just drop it all start from scratch do your Superman movie. Why was that but, misreported? But they could, they could she have said it, and then they said no. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think it's misreported. I mean, they were reporting what she said, and they said James Gunn said, I They really uh-huh. don't have their shit together. The they spaghetti's don't. Spaghetti's just falling out of their pockets. By the way, I know you want to read <laughs> stuff, and I get nice that, reference. but Gal Gadot is Wonder Woman. Who, who's better? No, yes. but there oh, is no God. one better. Yeah. The, uh, at least not with her star power. Though I, though her new movie, it's really bad. Mm. Uh, Heart of Stone is really... And that's... Com- Mary, Mary understands how much leeway I give spy thrillers. Hmm. I give a lot of leeway to the spy genre because I love, I love that particular type of film. Watching it's a so spy bad. thriller on it's, Netflix it, after Grey Man is psychotic behavior. It's, it kind <laughs> of is... Uh, the mother was really, really bad too with Jennifer mm. Lopez. But you know, uh, if mm. Gal Gadot can't save it, then yeah. nobody can save it. So, uh, yeah, guys, we're gonna we're going to see Blue Beetle tonight. We will have a review for you tomorrow on the show. I promise, if it's good, I will 
cross my heart and hope to die, I will, I will marry Nels. I'll, I'll probably end up saying like, yeah, it was fine. It was great. Very but, rarely is like going to see a movie like really bad. No, I, I never have a bad, like we, we went to the Barbie movie and I didn't like the movie, but it was still we were fine laughing. To, for the first 45 minutes until it, until it got depressing. That being said, uh, you have to go see the blackening. You may revisit your thought. Of that, yeah. That was terrible. Blue, oh my gosh. Blue Beetle looks really awful. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The the horror movie? Yeah. The, the spoof, the oh, comedy. Oh, yeah. You know. But like for me, it's just funny because Blue Beetle, like his introduction in the Justice League. Also, they're not doing Ted Cord. For anybody here who is a DC fan, they're not doing Ted Cord in this movie. So that's another reason. But uh, his introduction to his character in Justice League Unlimited is really, really good. Mm. And you're just not going to top that. So... We'll, we'll see how it goes. We will have a review for it tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.